Hello and welcome to my video on Bali where I'm going to tell you if it lives up to the Instagram hype you see online. I always felt Bali was one of those places you get sold as the dream holiday and after three months in Asia it was my final stop before heading to Australia. I had come from Thailand, Vietnam, Hong Kong, Singapore and just recently the Gili Islands and now to Bali Island I had my best friend fly out from England for this ultimate holiday. When me and my best friend were 18 we felt really pressured to go on a girls holiday after graduating through college before we went to university so we decided Ibiza might be the best place to go and we had a really crap time to be honest. Once we got there we realised it was only really for people who love to party, love clubs, don't mind seeing seedy hotels, unless you have a lot of money of course. I remember how many times I got conned in the streets out of my money, even by people I thought were really nice at first. Approached by drugs every five seconds, big groups of guys everywhere, it felt a little bit intimidating. On the plus side you could get pizza at 2am, which we did enjoy. After that disaster of a holiday, I told myself I'd never again be peer pressured into doing things, or to go to a place where getting off your face is the only activity. Sadly, Bali took me back to those times a little bit. I felt slightly conned by the online hype, but anyway, let me show you the good and the bad of my trip. So I started my trip in Ubud, which is one of the main locations you hear about, and it's definitely really, really nice in parts. I'll put the name of my beautiful hotel up here because it was stunning and it really made my first week amazing. This was me waking up on Christmas Day, would you believe? My journey to you, bud, was <laughs> quite difficult. I ordered so much food to the hotel room because I don't always feel like going out when I'm travelling. I'm a slow traveller, I always say this, because you feel pressured to be constantly busy and constantly out. When we just don't work like that, we need to shut down, we need to rest. And my hotel and the scenes there were just beautiful. I had so many spa days here as well. The spas in Asia make it, they're so good. I had Christmas Day massages and and experiences to make it a little bit less sad. Of course, I was homesick for England at Christmas, and it's bizarre. No one in Asia cares it's Christmas. It's not, you know, Christmas really. So you don't feel like you're missing anything. I remember when I got home in the spring a couple of months later, it felt like Christmas then, and it wasn't. It was bizarre. But yeah, I had a couple of experiences in the spa on Christmas Day. I think I spent about two hours in there. And then I went for a Starbucks. It's just the easiest thing to get some maybe vegan food or vegan milk or whatever. And I was just feeling so homesick. I needed some normalcy. So it's definitely a good space. They have a few of these around Asia, not that many. And I just go there to find some soy milk in a coffee. It's quite hard to come by in the standard places, but that's all good. I was really down, if I'm honest. I mean, for a few reasons. I'm out of hair extensions at this point. My best friend is about to fly here and she's. I'm waiting for her arrival in this video and she's also got a bag of hair extensions with her, which just thrills me. Travel hair is not for the weak, I tell you that. If you are the one that likes to be in the hair salon, getting the hair bleached and everything, getting the nails done, it's a hard life because you can't just get your hair done anywhere. So I had to just live with this all of the time and it was really hard. The heat actually melted my tips out of my head, so I had to deal with it as best as I could. This is the best I can do. But we had a really nice, like, Boxing Day meal booked at a vegan place called Zest. You have to get everywhere on the bikes in Bali, basically. And I saw more accidents in Bali than I saw on any other place I travelled to in Asia. And that's because there's a lot of young partiers and I think people can't ride bikes when they come here and they've never done it before. And the traffic is crazy. It's the worst thing in Bali. It's awful. But anyway, this is Zest. It's a lovely place. I came several times. The food is okay. I go more for a nice place and vibe and views. And this is my dream table. This is one of my most used video clips of my whole travel journey because it's just the most stunning sight I've ever seen. And this is me in the evening, probably with lots of leftovers. I spent the week waiting for Christmas to be over in bed, watching films, in and out the spa. There is rain on this day here, you can see. It rains all the time. It's really hot rain though. You don't really, it doesn't really bother you that much. They also had a jacuzzi in this hotel, so I had some flower baths and things like that just to get me going and keep me upbeat. I got some great content as well. I'm watching Chicken Run here. But when I was not watching films in bed, I got some brilliant ASMR content, which you can see on my ASMR channel. 
called the Bali Spa and it was super fun. I thought these jungle vibes on the back of the bike my partner's driving were just amazing. I love it. I really, really loved that. And I drove all the way to Changu here to find a hairdresser to see if they could give me a hair bleach. To be honest, this was desperate times. I told myself I wouldn't do this and I didn't end up doing it, but I decided against it. I just was patient. I'm staying in the monkey forest. That's what you, but he's known for. And monkeys well and truly are roaming the streets. They're just everywhere. They know how to unscrew a bottle of lemonade and down the thing. They know how to open a can of Coke. They know everything. They know to take your phone off you and in exchange for food and drink. It's really crazy. You've got to be careful. I actually didn't dare walk in the monkey forest. I feel really stupid now. I wish I had, but I just didn't dare. I thought if they take my phone out of my hands, I am screwed. So I just didn't dare. My friend was a bit squeamish with them as well. I was so excited when she arrived. We booked this waterfall tour off Airbnb experiences, which was brilliant. I recommend that to anyone because you always see these pictures of Bali waterfalls and travel and really cool pictures for Insta but it's actually hard that there's a lot of travel in between it the roads are crazy I wouldn't even try it on my own on bikes I would book a tour properly and go everywhere because it's really really interesting to get their help as well with not only pictures but about advice about where to go this is my best effort at enjoying the waterfalls before I got absolutely soaked makeup dripping off hair completely wet through and I turned into a sodden rat after this and I actually got really sick the next day. I have not got sick one day in a whole of Asia. I have major travel anxiety about sickness abroad. And you hear about barley belly all the time. Well, let me tell you, it's true. And I ate and drank absolutely nothing wrong. I put my face in the waterfall and I think that must have been it. I dread to think what it was because my friends weren't sick, only me. And I was the only one that got my face entirely soaked under the waterfall for the sake of a picture. The things I do. And it was awful. I spent the whole day in bed. It was New Year's Eve. I missed the whole thing. I felt like there were rocks in my stomach. So take the water safety really, really seriously. Don't chance it, not for anything. And this is our lunch stop. What beautiful views over rice fields. I just love the views. You see a lot of swings in restaurants as well where they want to charge you a little bit to have a beautiful picture on a swing or in like a little nest overlooking the fields. I got some lovely pictures actually, which I'll pop up on screen. I am looking worse for wear at this point. And sad to say, I've got several more waterfall stops to go. (laughs) This is the sad thing about not being home where you can get all of your comfort things like your beauty products, etc. You just have to deal. I mean, my hair doesn't look too bad here. It looks like I've got plenty of it, but I really don't. I am dying to get my extensions in. I knew there was no point until after the waterfall fiasco was over with though. I also lost a lot of weight in Bali because I was quite sick of the food I was eating. I'm vegan, so I can't just eat any old thing. I have to order it usually and from a vegan place. There was lots of them in Bali, luckily. This is me not realising I was about to get extremely ill the next day from that experience. But I got a picture under the waterfall, which I'll pop on screen. Was this worth a day in bed of illness? I don't know. There's so many people here in the waterfalls. You think on the pictures that it's just an empty space you've happened across. Not at all. You're queuing up for pictures just like anything. We had a coffee tasting tour at the end, which was really, really fun. I I like coffee for sure. I can't drink loads and loads of it. I feel a bit unwell if I do. But I loved seeing how it was roasted and trying out the different flavours. And here we are at like an Instagram photo spot that the locals have set up on a rice field. You pay a little bit of an entry fee and if you want to get more pictures on the swing you can see there you can rent a big dress all of the works and it is really fun don't get me wrong but sometimes you feel a bit like you're being conned you've paid an entry fee now you're paying for more and more and more here I am giving it a go anyway trying to be brave god all I can see is how awful I look which is so bad isn't it you should think about how much you enjoy these experiences but I just want to say it's okay to feel like you don't enjoy things when you don't look your best. People say, oh, it's part of travel, you know, you've just got to get on with it. But it's actually really annoying when your memories feel tainted and you don't want to look at things. And I'm sick of having to justify that sometimes. Here we are going out, a quick Starbucks and it's pouring down with rain. My dad sent me a Christmas present of this raincoat that I'm wearing. I really wanted to show him that I am putting it to good use under the cover of the Starbucks roof so my hair doesn't get wet. We were going for a meal before we moved on to our next location the next day. 
But again, I just want to show you the traffic in Ubud Centre and the monkeys climbing along these electric lines. They're climbing in the laundromat. They're climbing all over the place. You've got to be really aware of that. This is the final morning in Ubud. We are waiting for a taxi to the ferry port and this is our big Bali disaster and how it begins. God, how I wish we hadn't bothered to leave you, but it was a serious disappointment. We waited ages for a taxi. We thought we'd missed the ferry. I have to take pills to knock me out because I'm so seasick. And I had to keep taking them, which means I don't really remember anything. It was a joke. We got to the ferry port. We got on the boat only to be told and after an hour of sitting there that the sea was too rough. It had upturned in the sea already. Everyone had lost their luggage, their passports. Luckily, they were safe. So we had to go find a random hotel for the night and this is us finding it. We had a beautiful hotel booked in Nusa Penida and that's where we were heading and it was just not possible. This is the state of it. Nobody could get on any boat. It was going to take all day. By this point, we were so scared that we were going to lose our passports and possibly all of our belongings in the sea in an upturned ferry. We decided not to bother. We really, really couldn't face it anymore. So we went on to our third stop, which was going to be Uluwatu, when we found a hotel willing to take us for a few days. We rented some bikes and got to this lovely restaurant here, which I think is a nearly vegan restaurant called Alchemy. In Bali, lots of the restaurants are very posy, they're very, I don't know, Instagrammable is the word. It's a really nice outdoor space as well, which I do appreciate. And in the evening, it made for a really nice meal. And it was quite close to our hotel as well. And I had this sort of vegan breakfast sort of thing where you've got even a vegan fried egg there, which I thought is really cool and something you don't see that often. And my friends had this one here with another little fake egg on top. The menu was actually really cool. They had some nice breakfast things. They had a breakfast bar and these like cakes and tarts. They don't taste quite the same as you'd expect, but they're fine. They're nice. I like those types of things. The more health food... It's called raw food. Everything in Bali seems to be fucking raw food. I just want a cooked meal every now and then. <laughs> and this is why I lost weight because I didn't fancy anything. I lived on, I think, plain Pringles and water for months on end. And this is all of us on a bike because my best friend could not face a bike on her own. She was too scared. She was shaking. like She can drive as well, which I can't. She was shaking like a leaf. And I think you do need a driver's license to do a bike. Anyway, today we wanted to head to a beach. And so far in, in the whole of Asia, I've not really loved any of the beaches. They're all quite thin, windy, really rough seas. This is probably brilliant for surfing, but I'm not a surfer. I'm a lay down on the sunbed and sit there kind of girl. It was so, so windy. The colours look beautiful, but you can even see here these still umbrellas. It's just not a pleasant place to sit. We did sit there, though. We did rent out a little sunbed, and as you'd expect, you do get approached quite a lot. I don't mind to some extent. I don't appreciate being touched without consent. I find that really hard to deal with in any country, and it's happened to me quite a few times. We tried to take some nice pictures on the beach, me and my best friend, but it was just so bloody windy, loads of rocks, and there's actually tons of litter. It's actually horrible, to be honest, in some areas where tourists have clearly left so much litter, but it's typical of places like this where it's just so party, party, party. I see the same things in Ibiza, in Magaluf. It's just such a shame. In the evening, we went for a walk to another little restaurant. As you can see here, just walking down the pavement feels really long, really windy. You really want to be on a bike. It's just a nightmare without. This was quite a famous Instagrammable spot. It has like a club in it and a beach bar. Something that someone told us about Bali is that every night it's somewhere different that you're meant to be. And that pissed me off so much. How can it be that I'm in Bali and I'm back to this kind of language where it's a different club every night that's everyone's going to be at and everywhere else is going to be dead. It really pissed me off and made me not like the island even more. My final hotel stop was still in Uluwatu as planned. These are the pink hotels. You might have seen these online. They really are the best. I saw one in the Gili Islands as well and it was just as lovely. And it was a really nice room, one of the best I've stayed in. Even the toilets are pink. It's really Instagrammable and nice. I had a really good time in this actually. And the pool area was lovely as well. It was time to get my extensions back in while we were in this hotel because it had the space for me to be able to do that. This is one of the more expensive hotels I stayed in in Asia as a whole. Maybe like 50 or 60 pounds a night. I think that's probably, what, 75 US dollars, something like that. Just look at this pool area. It's beautiful. Me and my best friend decided that we were just going to stay in the pool for a couple of days instead of looking around for experiences and keep getting disappointed. We didn't want to travel around really far. It doesn't feel good walking on the pavements on foot. 
So yeah, we just made the most of what we had. But to be honest, we could have had just as nice a holiday in Spain on the flight for two hours, which was what was most disappointing. This is me getting up in the morning to fill up the water bottles at reception. Again, you can't just drink water. I haven't had my hair this dark since I was about 14 years old, so it was really weird. The hotel also had a lovely on-site spa, so you could have a really fun, relaxing day, just staying within your own realm. It also had some really nice little cafes nearby. There's lots of lovely Indian food in Bali and in Asia as a whole, I found. We also had a floating breakfast. Of course, you'll see this all over Instagram. My God, it is so overfussed. Not to say it didn't make a beautiful picture. I looked a mess, so whatever. But then when you stood there trying to eat your meal in the in the pool, it's actually kind of annoying and it's just not possible. Wouldn't recommend this to anyone that wouldn't really mind spending the money unless you really want that kind of content, which I did. I just really wanted to have some pictures and videos of me doing this. It was about nine in the morning. No one else in the hotel was up yet, so we could get the pool nice and empty for this but the bugs and the ants soon got to our food and we couldn't eat it that's just what happens all the time you've got to be really quick and leaving anything out will just leave a trail of ants anywhere I've been in Asia my last day in the pool and in Asia as a whole I was reflecting on this experience and thinking did I enjoy it did I love every minute no I didn't I loved a lot of it and had some great experiences I'm not ever afraid anymore to say that some of it wasn't enjoyable it didn't live up to expectations I feel like you can get conned into saying that it was really good and the experience of a lifetime and you want to go traveling again forever I don't I backpacked for four months in Asia and that's the last time I'll do that in Asia to be honest and hopefully in a lot of places I really don't want to live out of a bag I like my luxuries and I'm not afraid to say it. The hotel had a beautiful sunset. I was getting ready for my final night. I was going to have a very emotional goodbye with my best friend in the airport. I was dreading this. It was really hard for me to not just go home with her. I really wanted to, especially when I went to Hong Kong because I got quarantined in Hong Kong. And I just desperately wanted to go home for Christmas. But I couldn't. I couldn't do it to myself. And thankfully I didn't because I had an amazing experience in Australia after this. That just made it all so much better. I'm very burnt, by the way. I know this, but I just burn easily. I was covered in sun cream. I always am very careful, but it's never enough. I have quite pale porcelain skin. So on we go back to alchemy tonight. We all on the back of a bike having a great time. I really love driving around on bikes when the roads are nice and empty, that is, because it's just fun as a passenger. And eventually after a few weeks, I got the confidence to film on the back of the bike. Obviously, you do have to be careful and I would usually recommend wearing helmets, of course. So yeah, back to this place. It was the only place I could guarantee a nice, quiet vibe. Some of the places are quite hot and stuffy. You know, you don't get much air conditioning anywhere at all. Only in your hotel room are you guaranteed any air conditioning. And I'd still verify that because it's impossible without it. And we had a lovely time. The sky was beautiful colour and I thought it was a sign that I'd done everything right and it was time to leave and I didn't need to worry and I needed to go on. Now, Bali, would I come back? No, I wouldn't. There's much easier places to travel in, such as Thailand, where you'll have an easier time of it and a lot less traffic, less busy, better infrastructure. I'd say Bali is for those that don't really suffer with much travel anxiety and just want to go and have a bit of a party. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know where else I should visit. Goodbye.